uh, Miranda in Dallas, Texas. We may just get your question in, and, and then uh, Father will have to give you the answer uh, over the break. I'm not sure. Uh, but if you could just give us your question quickly, Miranda, Dallas, Texas, listening on iHeart, the iHeartRadio app. Your question for Father Joseph Fessio. Hi, uh, Father. Thank you for taking my call. I'll try to be brief. Um, my husband and I uh, were married in the Catholic Church, and we have a three-year-old right now, and I am pregnant, and we recently found out that we're having twins. Hey, congratulations. Um, um, hey, uh, hey. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, we're very, very excited. Um, unfortunately, my husband um, has said, you know, after three kids, he doesn't want to have any more children. I have not felt that way. Um, he is non-denominational Christian, um, but we did get married in the church, and we are raising our children Catholic. Um, and I thought I had a few years until we had our third child, but now we're going to already have two and three. And um, one of his arguments is that he thinks, you know, um, population growth. Uh, he's concerned about carbon footprint and uh, yeah. overpopulation. So I'm just wondering if there are any resources to kind of debunk that myth and argue that with him. Uh, from a Catholic standpoint. Father, uh, Miranda's question before we went to the break had to do with, isn't it an appropriate kind of argument, or is it a valid argument to say a child is using up the resources of this world, and therefore we should not have so many children? It's not appropriate, I'll tell you why. First of all, Miranda, have you ever flown in an airplane? Yes, I have. <laughs> and so you fly out of Dallas, Texas, you see a lot of empty space down below, don't you? Yes, that's correct. You know, that every human being alive in the world today, that's over 7 billion, could live inside the boundaries of Texas in a three-bedroom house, and there'd be room for everybody. Every human being alive on the planet today could lie down on the ground and be within the city limits of Jacksonville, Florida. It's just that we travel in the corridors. We travel in Dallas, San Francisco, and we think it's crowded. It's not crowded. Uh, the problem in the West, and I, when I West, I say especially Europe, there's not even replacement population. The United States is, except for immigration, would be below immig uh, uh, below replacement. So here's what: I, first of all, I hope that your 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 husband loves those twins so much that he's going to want to have triplets next time, uh, because <laughs> the greatest the greatest resource we have. It's not fossil fuels, it's not electricity, it's not nuclear power, it's the human brain and the human person. And in 1970s, Paul Ehrlich wrote his book called The Population Bomb, predicting that by 1980s, the world will be in starvation. We have more food per person on the planet now we had 30 years ago. Uh, the human mind, human productivity has been able to, uh, to provide so much that the world, even though there's poverty in the world, there's, there's less poverty in the world now than there was 50 years ago and 100 years ago. So the, the, the idea that we're going to somehow save the planet by having fewer children, that's totally mistaken. Plus the fact, how long are we supposed to have this planet? You know, it's not forever. We don't know what God's plan is. We do know this. The very first thing God said in Genesis chapter 1 is when he created man and woman, he says, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. That's the one big commitment, the first thing God said. So I realize this may not convince your husband. The most important thing for you, Marin, is to love your husband, love your children, get him to love your children, and be a real father to them, and appreciate the fact that, you know, the best thing we can do for our country is to have a large family with parents that live together and stay together and pass on not our culture and our faith to them. Because why do we have crime? Why do we have poverty? You look at the statistics. It's broken families. I mean, people in prison, broken families, drug use, broken families, divorce, single parenthood. We have to pray for those people. But the thing is, what makes a society great is strong, healthy families. And leave it to God. You know, I mean, how many does he want you to have? I don't know. But St. Ignatius Hello, the founder of the Jesuits, was number 13 in his family. St. Catherine of Siena, when she you know, criticized the Pope and got him to go back from uh, Avignon to Rome in the 14th century. Uh, she was a twin, number 21 and 22. So let's not let's not limit what God can do. But I, I'm clearly, Miranda, I'm not trying to, ex you know, exhort you because I know you want to have children. You want to be a mother. Thank God you've got three now, but don't stop there. Tell your husband, have one more for me because I can't have it. <laughs> 
Thank you so much, Father. Uh, you really have solidified um, my stance, and I hope that God just gives me the correct words and softens my husband's heart to having more children. In well, the one last thing, Miranda. There may be some good books on this side. Can you think of some books you should, should read? I'll tell you what. I'm going to recommend a resource that you're going to be surprised that I recommend. But, Miranda, if you go to the New York Times website and type in Paul Ehrlich, last year the New York Times made a video about the population bomb and the hysteria and they included themselves, what the New York Times had reported. And they really demonstrate the whole thing was nonsense. It wasn't a hoax as much as it was a panic. And it's just not true. There's never been a better time in the history of the world to have children. The world needs them. The world can feed them. And we ought to have more of them. So I'll send you to the New York Times. Just type in Paul Ehrlich, population bomb, and you're going to see a video that's going to—it'll uh, change things for you. Thank Amen. you. Thank you so much, Sykeller. Thank you, Father. Thank you very much, Miranda. Very, very happy to take your call.